Okay, good morning everyone. <clears throat> Today's daf is daf Sadi Chesam at Aleph, and we're on the third line of the Gemara. Amar Rav Shmuel bar Yehuda, Amar Rabbi Abba, Amar Rav Huna, Amar Rav. So Rav is the author of this statement. Amavir Dalad Amos Gershus Arabim Mekura. If you carry four Amos in a Rishus Arabim that is roofed, I'm thinking like Grand Central Station, right? Well, what's the station downtown Toronto? Union. Union, Union Station. Sorry, I should, should use a Canadian example. If you if you carry Dalad Amos on Shabbos in a Rishus Harabim that has a roof over it, in the grove, right? Oh, okay, yeah. right. So Patur, you have not done a Malacha Lufi She'eno Dome Le Midbar, because it's not similar to the way that the Jewish people traveled in the desert and assembled and carried the clay hamishkan. And since they carried out in the open in the desert, if you carry under a roof, you're not uh, emulating the way that the malacha was done in the midbar. So the Gemara now asks the question, like the, shuks, the old time shuks, they had roofs? Whatever, as, uh, it could be anything. So the Gemara now, it could be the old time shuks, a bazaar, whatever. Any, is this really so? Viha agolos de makuros havyan. Now let's think about this for a second. The wagons. Remember we talked about the wagons of the Levium? Now think about the wagons for a second. Now the wagons were transporting all different kinds of materials of the Mishkan. We had talked about the beams that the wagons had transported. We talked about the four wagons, two in front, two in back. Now let's think about the dimensions of each wagon. Each wagon was five amos by five amos. Rashi gives us all of this background information. The bed of the wagon was rectangular. It was five amos, really, by two and a half amos. That was the bed of the wagon. And the wheels added the extra girth, the extra width and the dimension to stretch it out to five amos. There was also five amos between each wagon. And so when you were loading the beams onto each wagon, the beams were loaded on um, horizontally onto each wagon in stacks. Now, each beam, let's talk about each beam, the dimensions of each beam, 10 amos height, one and a half amos width, and the depth of each beam, the thickness of each beam is one amos. 10 by one and a half, by one. You load a beam flat lying horizontally over the bed of the wagon. Each beam protrudes out of either side of the wagon since the wagon width is five amos, two and a half amos on either side. You've got flat beams that are stacked on a wagon bed and if the beams are protruding they're almost touching each other when the two wagons are going eastward ho. Then you've got the beams almost touching each other from the two side wagons because there's only five amos distance between the two. Now think about that for a second. What, what is the area between the two wagons? We're going to see in just a second that that's considered to be a Rishus Sarabim. If the beams are covering that entire area between the wagons, then that's technically a roofed area. It's not desert. But it's not, not it's not desert anymore. Not oh, it's because it, it was, uh, <clears throat> well, it, they're almost touching, so it's considered to be a covered area. So this is the problem. That the wagons underneath the wagon bed and between the wagon beds and to the outside of the wagons where the two and a half amas of beam is protruding also is considered to be a Rishus Arabim. So how can that be if you're telling me that a covered Rishul Sarabim is not a Rishul Sarabim? Answers the Gemara, Ki Ka'amarav Bidarasa, or Bidarasa, I think is the way you'd have to explain it, explains the Gemara that when Rav says that the sides of the wagon are Rishul Sarabim, he's talking about the gap between the stacks. The gap between the stacks is not covered you have gaps between the stacks, and that's the part that's Rishul Sarabim, but I grant you that Mamish underneath the stacks of the beams, that's not Rishul Sarabim. So Frek the Gemara Mechti, wait a minute. Orcha da'agola kama havoi. Let's do the math. 
The length of a wagon from the front of the bed to the back of the bed of the wagon is five amos. So it's chamesh amin. Pusyu dikeresh kama havoi. What's the width of each beam? One and a half amos, as I mentioned to you before. Amsa upalga is one and a half amos. So kama mosiv. So the Gemara makes an assumption, and this is a, a, a correct assumption, says Rashi, that they had to maximize the efficiency of each wagon, otherwise there would be no point. If you're traveling in the desert, you have to maximize efficiency. So how many stacks could you have if each beam is one and a half amos wide and the, the length of the bed is five amos? Three, three, you know, three stacks, three because three stacks... Three stacks sideways. That's what I said, yeah. Well, three, three stacks three, stack three, three stacks going up which are positioned sideways on the wagon bed right so you can have three stacks of one and a half ama wide beams and the most that you're going to space that you're going to have how many spaces do you have if you have three stacks how many spaces mm -hmm. do you have you have two spaces each space has to add up to no more than a half of an ama mm -hmm. the total the total of the two spaces is a half of an ama now how much is a half of an ama three twachim if you're dividing that half of an amma into two spaces, it's like one and a half ammas of space in between, <coughs> one and a half tfachim, uh, sorry, in between each stack. What's that called if it's less than three tfachim? Lovud. Lovud. And if it's lovud, then the space is not considered a space. We learned yesterday. So the Gemara's question, therefore, is so, Kishadi Lam, uh, he says, so, Kama Moshe Tlasa, you have three stacks. Pasha Le Palga Da so you only have half of an Amma left in a five Amma length bed if you're taking up three stacks of one and a half each. Kishadi Lamar Baini Ubaini Kalavad Dami. Then you have Lavud. So there is no space, there is no gap halachically between the stacks. <laughs> So the Gemara says, wait a minute, mi savris kroshim apusayu have a monachlu, achudan monachlu. So the Gemara comes up with this einfall. The Gemara says, guess what? The stacks were not positioned on this side, this way, they were positioned this way. Meaning that the, on the narrower uh, depth of the beams, that's how you stack them. Remember, the dimensions were ten amas long, ten amas high, one and a half amas wide, one amma thickness. So they stacked them on the narrow one amma side, and therefore there was more of a gap in between each one. Wait a minute, says the Gemara. That's not going to work. Because if you're maximizing efficiency, then how many stacks now can you make on each wagon? Five. Five, five no, not five. Four. That's a good, it's a good argument. But Rashi says you need a little bit of a space between each stack, and you, don't, you only have maximum five amas. So you can only make four stacks. So if you have four stacks of beams, um, so then, uh, so Arba, so he says, he says, ka, he says, so so sumcha dekeresh kama havi amsa. He says, so the depth of each beam is one amma. Fine. Kama hava mosiv. How many stacks can you make? Arba, four stacks. Pashala amsa. All you have is one amma for how many gaps between, between three, three, three gaps, right? Kishadi Lamar Baini Ubaini Kalavadami. One Amma divided into three parts is still less than three Tvachim. Because a full Amma is six Tvachim. So if you divide six by three, you only have two Tvachim per space, per gap. You still back to love it. So the Gemara now says, So now we're going to see a machlokas, and this is why I needed my handy dandy doorstopper as, an, as a sample. We're going to see a machlokas in Ahmed Bez in just a second. What was the structure, what was the uh, form of the beams? There's one opinion that says, the way we normally think about it, is that the beams were. 10 by one and a half by one, uniformly from top to bottom. But there's another opinion that says that the thickness of the beam tapered the more you went up, like this, okay? The beam that was facing on the inside of the Mishkan was always flush and flat and straight, but on the outside, <coughs> it tapered to a point that was only one finger, finger breadth. 
Why that is, I don't know. That's the, some, some tradition that says it that way. We're going to see later on perhaps a reason for why Rabbi Yehuda holds that way. It's Rabbi Yehuda who holds this way. They taper it up. Now, if you're stacking the beams like this, so then we could understand that on the tapered side of the, where the wagon, on the, on the side of where the beams taper, then you'll have big gaps between. And that's where Rav would say that those gaps would represent the Rosh Hashanah. That would make sense, says the Gemara. But if Fine. It's you just alternate them so that they come together with less space. Yeah. Um, but, but no. But even if you maximize the efficiency, how would it work? Well, uh, that's maybe. No, no, no. Yeah. In other words, maybe you'd, you'd put. Oh, that's a, that's a good point because you could around. put turn them around. Right. Yeah. You put the yeah. bottom. Right. Together. That's no, a great. That it's, would it's, a it's a good argument. It's a good argument. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so maybe, maybe, maybe we would. Maybe we could make the argument that it was not perhaps covered for the bottom of one carriage to be a, a, a connected to the top of another carriage. Maybe that's, but that, maybe that's an answer. But why the Gemara doesn't think of that, it's an excellent question. Maybe Tosfus deals with it, I don't know. Oh, wait a minute, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, Jack, one second. Maybe that's the reason that they were, that they were tapered, so that they could fit together, and if the end, in the end they were going to fit together, then there's no question of color. The, the Gemara doesn't offer that as the reason. We'll see, we'll see why in just a moment. Why did they take the base of English apart on the Shabbos? They no, they didn't. They didn't. No, 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 not at all. We learned that whatever they did during the weekday is what we may not do on Shabbos. Okay? Right. Okay. So anyway, so, um, so anyway, if you learn that the beams tapered as they went up, then you can understand the big gaps in the wagon, the way that they were traveling in the wagon. But, according to the other opinion, the way we normally conceptualize the beams, that they're the exact same thickness on top as on bottom, then the gaps are all love, but you have no gaps, and you back to the original question. So, Amr of Kahana, Ba'at Bo'i. Rashi gives us two explanations of what At Bo'i means. One explanation is like Jack was just saying, is the rings. There were um, rings on the outside of each kerish in the center, going, on, uh, going up in the center, the, on the back of each kerish, there were rings where you would put an iron stave to hold together as a brace. You'd hold it, you'd hold it together. We're going to learn about that in just a moment as well. So those rings created, because you needed to make space for those rings, what you would do is, is that you would stack the krashim like this, where the two parts, the two beams that, two beams that were facing inwards would be flush against each other, and then the ring would be on the outside here and the outside here, and then you do another stack the same way, and this would create a gap between the two sets of two, such that there was a gap that was no longer loved because of the ring space. That's one explanation of what atboi means. Another explanation of what atboi means is that it's merely a methodology of stacking having to do with maximizing the efficiency of the physics to provide the most stability of the stacks. And Rashi explains that the way that we stack things when we want to provide more stability is that we'll put two stacks of wood together, flush touching each other, and that's the way they did it on the wagon, is that if you had four stacks on the wagon like we just mentioned, you put two on one end of the wagon, connected mamish touching each other, and then the other two also on the other end of the wagon, mamish touching each other, and the space in between them was an ama. And that's the part where there's no love it anymore, and that's the part which is Rav calls the Rosh Hashanah. So fine, the Gemara says, At boy hechi lahu, agaba da agala. So fine, the Gemara says, I get it. I get it that you have this space in the middle of the wagon, but it's on top of the wagon. But I have another question. But agola gufa makura havoi. But the bed of the wagon itself is considered to be a cover. Remember, what did Rab say? Not only are the sides of the wagon a Rishus Arabim, and the area between the wagons a Rishus Arabim, but underneath the wagon is also Rishus Arabim. Didn't you say it was open on the bottom? No, I said it's open on top. Oh, on the, the question the is, what about the wagon bed itself? The wagon bed itself should form a cover underneath the wagon. So Mark must have be a prophet, because the Gemara answers, Amar Shmuel be that the wagon bed itself 
is not a solid plank. It's not a solid piece of wood like a like a, like a Ford pickup, right? But rather, what is it? It's a um, it's made out of sticks, or it's made out of <coughs> of um, <coughs> stakes, or whatever you want to call it, um, that are that are not solid. It's like a mesh, or of some kind. There, there you go. Right. It's um, it's basically like like a workhorse. Is that what they call it? Those. Um, yeah. It's basically pieces of wood that would just hold the. Uh, but the wagon itself also is not a solid bed. Okay. Tana rabbana. So now let's look at this machlokus more carefully. This machlokus that we mentioned as to whether the uh, the crushim the beams were tapered, or whether they went straight up uniformly. So the Raisa says, Krasha milamatan ovyan ama, o milamalan kolan vaholchen ad ke'etzpa. So that first opinion is that they were tapered. They tapered up to the top to the point where when you got to the top, they looked, it was only one finger's width uh, of, the, of the keresh. Shinamar, and how do we know? This is based on a pasuk. It says, Yihiyu samim al rosha, that the Krashim shall be tamim at the top. Now, what does the word tam mean? Tamim could either mean pure or whole, or it could also mean complete. The word complete means two things, coming to an end or full. So therefore, if you look in Sefer Yehoshua, what does it say? Tamu nichrisu. That they, the word tam, like, like tam v'nishlam, that we've completed something, it comes to an end. Coming to an end means that, just like when the Jordan River was split, the water came to an end, and um, it came to like a point to split to allow the Jewish people to cross over the Jordan. So too, the word tam over here means it comes to a point, it comes to a, uh, an end, so that it's tapered. That's the way Rabbi, Neche- Rabbi Yehuda understands it. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Nechemia Omer, Rabbi Nechemia disagrees, and he says, no, kishem shemilamatan ovyan ama, kach milamalan ovyan ama. Just like at the bottom, it's one ama thickness. So too at the top, it's the exact same thickness. Shenemar, as it says, yachtov. As it says, yachtov means a uniformity from top to bottom or from bottom to top. Frek the Gemara to Rebbe Nechemia, v'haksiv tamim. Doesn't it say the word tamim, which means that it's coming to a point? Ahu, deleisu shleiman v'loleisu denisra. Explains the Gemara that all the word tamim means, according to Rabbi Nechemia, is that when you make the beams, they have to be made of one solid piece of wood, and you can't uh, take two pieces and nail them together to make the beam. In other words, the Mishkan cannot be made in China, right? <clears throat> you don't use particle board and don't use the cheap wood. You got to use one expensive piece of wood. No, <coughs> the either, right? What? Knockdown. They call it a knockdown. Okay. The idach nami. So what is Rabbi Yehuda going to do with the word haksiv yachtov? Doesn't it say yachtov, which implies a uniformity of thickness from bottom to top? He says that that has to do with the assembly. When you assemble the beams together, make sure that they are aligned so that one is not going a little bit in and one's going a little bit out, but make sure you align them properly so that it looks like one solid wall once you put the whole mishkan together. Now, now, let's go. According to Rebbe Nechemia, who says that it was uniform thickness from bottom to top, that works out well because Then I could understand the architecture of the back wall of the Mishkan. Now, the back wall of the Mishkan, let's understand, first of all, that the floor space of the Mishkan, when I say floor space, that's deliberate, meaning the inner dimensions of the Mishkan were 10 amos wide and 30 amos length. Now, think about it for a second. If you've got, you've got um, planks that are one and a half amos wide, and those planks have to form the back wall of the Mishkan. Now, how are you going to get up to 10 amas floor, floor space with planks that are one and a half amas wide each? So the Torah says, Taseh shisha kirashim. Six beams, six times one and a half is how much? Nine. So the question is, what do you do with the extra ama of floor space that you need? Because it says, Ushnei kirashim taseh limkutsos hamishkan. That additional two planks 
should be added on each corner for the corners of the Mishkan. And how does that work? The Asi Pusya Dahani Mimali Lailasumcha Dahani. And then it works out well because when you add the extra one and a half ama plank to the six planks in the middle, you're going to be using that as the back wall. Let me just explain it this way. Okay, You've, this is your back wall, and you're going to have uh, six plus, uh, plus another two. You're going to have a total of eight. So just imagine that this is plank one and this is plank eight, okay, for just a second. And you've got another six in between here. What's the, what's the total dimension? Eight times one and a half? Twelve. 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 So what do you do with, what do you do with the other two amas? It's very simple because you're going to use the protruding ama on this side and the protruding ama on this side as the space, the starter, for the walls coming, going east and west. Okay? Do you understand? So therefore, if this is one ama thickness, and here, pass me that Gemara, please. And, and this is one ama thickness, so then you've got minus two, and then the floor space, the dimensions from here to here is ten. Ele it's very elegant, right? On the, the math works. Twelve on the inside, it's ten. Right. Exactly. You got it so far? You with me? Okay. However, says the Gemara, that's only going to work out according to Rebbe Nechemia. But because they're all they're uniform, going from bottom to top. Now think about it. If instead of beams that are like this, you have beams that are like this. Now, when you put this over here, it's ugly. Because you've got a piece on the outside over here sticking out. It's, ugh, it's not flush. It's not flush anymore. You also have a gap on the back wall yeah. because the top is a point. No, that's not from, from the inside, that's not going to be a problem. It's only from the outside that it's going to look yucky. It's going to look yucky. It's, it's, there's going to be a, a, a protrusion, a sticking out on the outside that's not going to be elegant. It's not going to be flush. So that's the question. The Gemara says, So the one's going to be going in and one's going to be sticking out. You're going to have a protrusion. So the Gemara answers, Here's what you did. You took these side, these end planks, and you shaved them down going this way. And by shaving them down, so they were, they were tapered on, this, on the back side, plus tapered like this side, so they sloped like a mountain, is basically what the Gemara says. They sloped like a mountain from both sides now, from the back side and from, the, and from this side. And that's how you made it elegant to make sure that everything fit the way it was supposed to. Just the corner pieces. Just the corner pieces, right. Now, by the way, there is a medrash which says, so you might say, well, this just complicates things further, because then you'd have to remember which ones are the corner pieces. Numbers. They look different. Because <laughs> they look different. But, but the point is, the point is, is that the pieces of the Mishkan were numbered. There's a medrash that says that, that they were numbered, that you could identify. You were never allowed to reposition. If there was a one plank, which was plank 22, it always had to go in the space of 22. There's a, there's a medrash that says that. I think, I'm not sure whether it's a medrash or a gemara that says that. They carry that and know which one's the Gary. Yeah, just like when you, when you take apart your sukkah. Yeah, they wouldn't have to. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, right. They wouldn't have to. That's what most people put up their sukkahs. That's right, that's right. If the ground's not exactly level when you put it up, then then that bar that goes across won't line up properly. You're right. They had to, obviously, they had to make sure that the ground was level wherever they rested. Okay, next, let's go on. Now let's talk about that iron brace that went through. So the, the, that brace that went through all of, the, all of the beams to brace them together. So Now this is fascinating. Normally, if you have, now the, the walls of the, the, the Krushim only formed three walls. There wasn't, a, the fourth wall was open, okay? But the three walls, if I told you that there was an iron brace that went through all of the Krushim, you would say, okay, so you need three braces, one for each wall, right? One, one, one. No. There was a miracle that there was only one brace, and it was shaped like a U. So how do you get it on? <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> how do you get it on if you've got to loop it through? It was a miracle. 
that it became elastic when you needed to put it on, and then once it was on, it became iron again. Well, you could it could have screws. Oh, you put it have screws inside. You put it in from one no from the outside, but it's got loops. You had to feed it through the loops. In the beams. Yeah. So why is it hard to do? No, the center one went it's right iron. through. It's iron. It's made out of iron. iron. Yeah, yeah, but, but it, it could have screws. It just fits under the back. Yeah, yeah, it, it could have screws. screws. No, but the back one has loops also. Ah. <laughs> How does it turn the corner? To that? Uh, it, uh, I thought maybe the back one just have loops. So you just, just no, no, no. The back one has loops one. also. No, but there's an answer yeah. for that. If, if it has screws and you just, you know, like, there's one big one, and then it's screws in the All right, so Chazal say there weren't screws. Chazal say it was a knife. One long piece. Yeah, they didn't go to technical school. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. But you no, round the corner with the, with the, uh, the iron. I'll tell you what, you, you try it. Let me know if it works. <laughs> okay. If the loop is large enough, you can go around the corner. Yeah, but you get another no. loop to come around it, and go. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. ain't going to happen. Okay. It's 10 on the loop, but 30 on the side. Okay. And then it's okay. Next. 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 Let's go on. The Mishnah Torah says, now that we've talked about the, the Kurashim and we've talked about the brace, now we're going to talk about the Urios, the covers for the Mishkan. The Mishkan had two types of covers. It had a fabric cover that went on first, and then it had a animal hide cover that went on top of that. <laughs> now the Torah tells us that the dimensions of the fabric that was used there were 10 pieces of fabric that were 28 amos long and 4 amos wide, and they were hooked together through these, um, through these things called uh, 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 krasin and lulaos, clasps, that linked the pieces of fabric together. Now, w you'll see why in just a second they're 28 by 4. There's 10 of them that's 28 by 4. And then the hides were a little bit larger. They were 30 amos by four, and there were 11 of them. Instead of 10, there were 11 of them. Now that we have this information, let's go through the math and see how they draped over the, over the top. So let's see. So, ta, um, um, so orech ha'yiriya ha'echa shmona ve'esrim ba'ama. The Torah says that the length of one piece of fabric was 28 amos. So shadi or chayu lepus the mishkan, and you would place it horizontally over over the over the mishkan, in other words, uh, the length of the of the fabric went over the heart, the width of the mishkan. Mm -hmm. So therefore, think about it: the mishkan is ten amos high, and it's ten amos wide in the floor space. But it's like like Mike had said: it's twelve amos when you include the thickness of the krushim. But you only have to include the thickness of the krushim according to Rabbi Nehemia, who says that they didn't taper at the top. <coughs> But if they tapered at the top, then you don't have to reckon with the width of the crushing. So therefore, the Gemara explains as follows. So, uh, 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 so, uh, so, uh, so, so you have a 28 a long piece of fabric. You've got 10 for the roof. So you've got leftover 18. Nine for one side and nine going down, draping on the other side. So the Reb Yehuda, that's according to Reb Yehuda, who says that the Krushim were tapered at top, and therefore you don't have to reckon with the thickness of the Keresh. So Migal Ya'ama Da'adonim. And therefore, the only thing that was exposed after you put the fabric on was the very bottom Ama of the Krushim, which contained the silver sockets. The silver sockets were on the bottom ama of the floor of the Mishkan to hold the Krushim together. L'Rebi Nechem Ya Migal Ya Ama De Krushim Shad Ama De Krushim. And according to Rebbe Nechem Ya, since he, he holds that the Krushim were not tapered, then it's 12 amas that had to drape over the top. And then if it's 12 amas that had to drape over the top, you've only got 8 going draping down on either side. And therefore, not only do you have the ama, the silver sockets exposed, but an ama above that of wood is also exposed. Now, shadi pusai hu l'orchan de mishka, l'orcha de mishkan kama havya, arboim. Now, when you take the ten pieces of fabric that are four amos wide, and you drape it across the length of the mishkan, so that's 40 amos, because it's four times ten. And so, what is, the, what is the length of the mishkan? What did we say? 30. So, 
Dal plus and Laugra. So Laigra. So you have thirty of that forty to cover the roof of the Mishkan. And remember, you're not covering it over the front. The front is an open space. So you start at the very front. That's where the fabric starts. It goes all the way to the back. You've got ten amos left over for the back wall. So, Pasha Luhu Yud, L'Rebbe Yehuda, Mechash Ya Amada Adonim, and L'Rebbe Nechemya, Megal Ya Amada Adonim. And so, the, again, you have a machlok between Rebbe Yehuda and Rebbe Nechemya. According to Rebbe Yehuda, because the back crushim also tapered, so then the drape went all the way down to the floor and covered the sockets. And according to Rebbe Nechemya, since you have to reckon with the thickness of the crushim, so then it went down only to the bottom ama, the bottom ama, which was the silver sockets, those were exposed. If it was four ounces wide, how would it stay on the back wall and not slide down? Because, because they were clasped together. They were all clasped well, together. Well, the, 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 the Everything, it was, it was all clasped, all the fabric was clasped uh, together, so that it's one forty ama long piece of fabric. Okay. Next, now that we've talked about the fabric that is the inner cover, now let's talk about the animal hides that are the, uh, that are the, the top cover. And, and there were 11 of those that were four amos wide, and those were 30 amos long each. So each one was 30 amos long. And shadi orchayu lepusya de mishkan kamahavya tlosin. So first of all, You've got, you drape them over, the, the length of the skin of the hide goes over the width of the mishka. Okay, that's the same way that the fabric does. And just like the fabric was clasped together, so too the animal hides were attached together as well. So you've got 30, it's the length of 30 is each animal hide. Dal eser le igra, you use the 10, in, the ten middle amas to cover the roof. Pashulahu Esilahagisa, the Esilahagisa, then you've got ten to drape over each side. So the Rebbe Yehuda Mechas Yama Da Adonim, the Rebbe Yehuda Nechemia Migal Yama Da Adonim. So according to Rebbe Yehuda, who says you don't reckon with the thickness of the crushing because they were tapered, so then these hides went all the way down to the ground and covered the silver sockets. And according to Rebbe Nechemia, says you do reckon with the thickness of the crushing because they were not tapered, then each hide went down on the sides, down to the silver sockets, but the sockets were exposed. Tanya no mihachi, we have a brisa to support this. The ha'ama mizeh, the ha'ama mizeh ba'odev, that there is an ama on either side that is left over for the for the length of the uh, krashim. Lechasos ama shel adonim diver bihuda. That was to cover, or in other words, there was an extra ama of skin that was extended beyond the cloth that was underneath it. The, according to Rabbi Huda, that was to cover the silver sockets. And Rabbi Nechem Yomer Lachasus Amashel Krashim Rechemim Yomer Lachasus says, the silver sockets, you wanted to be exposed. That was beauty, <coughs> to expose the silver. But it was to expose that piece of uh, ama, space of wood that was exposed by the cloth. Next. Shadi Pusayhu Pusayhu Laorche de Mishkan. Then you would take the thickness of the hides, over and cover them over the length of the Mishkan, right? So you've got 11 hides of four amos wide each. That's 44 amos. Kamahavya mem va'arba. That's 44 amos of length of, of animal hides. Dal plus and le'igra. So you've got 30 of that 44 to cover the roof. Pashaluhu arba sre. So you've got 14 left over. Where did that 14 amos of extra hide go? So dal tarti le'kafla. So here the Gemara says, Two amas in the front actually act as, as a lip to hang over the front. The animal hide, actually two amas of the, of the front hide, covered over the entrance. So that when you'd walk in, you'd see like a little bit of a lip covering the top part of the entrance. So that's what the Pasuk says, that you cover over the, the innermost hide and half of it will cover over as a lip. So now you've got 12 amas on the back side left over. What are you going to do with it? So So according to Rebbe Yehuda, who says you don't reckon with the thickness of the kerish, of the beam, because it's tapered, then the Pasuk makes sense when it says that the very last skin, which is four amas wide, half of it, was as a, was saruach. The word saruach means that it was lowly and it was just flat on the ground. That makes sense because 
10 amos going straight down, 2 amos left over that are flat on the ground. So Elo the Rebbe Nechemia, my Tisrach. But according to Rebbe Nechemia, only one ama would have to be flat on the ground, not a full half of a, a half of a skin, but only a quarter of a skin. And yet that's not what the Pasuk says. It says, Chatsiha Yeria that half of the urea that was left over would be flat on the ground. So the Gemara says, how do you understand that according to Rebbe Nechemia? The answer is, Tisrach Mechav Roseha. The answer is, is that that half of the urea was different from all of the other ureos because half of that half would be flat on the ground. And therefore it was different from all of the other ureos. Like Rashi explains, because one ama of that half was to cover the sockets, uh, and the other half of that, and, which was not done by the others, and the other half was done flat. So the word tisrach, according to Nechemi, which means it was different from all the other ones. <coughs> so now the Gemara says, Tana Deve Rabbi Yishmael. Rabbi Yishmael says, Lama Mishkan Daimah. What is the Mishkan analogous to? And it's referring to the fact that the back wall of the Mishkan had some of the animal skin, Mama, schlepping on the ground. So what, was, what is that like? It's like a woman walking through the marketplace, and her long dress, the back of her long dress, is schlepping behind her. You know, it's, it's a new woman wears a nice long dress, and the back of the dress schleps a, schleps a little bit behind her. Like a Kala's wedding gown. Like a Kala's wedding gown. Train. A train. That's, that's what the back of the Mishkan was like, which is a beautiful analogy when you think about the Mishkan representing the marriage between God and the Jewish people. The Mishkan being a representation of Klal Yisrael, who's the Kala, and a Kodesh Baruch Hu, who's the Chassan, comes to rest uh, in the Mishkan. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, imagery, right? Tanu Rabbanon. Charutzim hayu kroshim v'chalulu hayu adonim. Now, we know, and this di diagram should make it very clear for you, that the bottom of each beam had a groove cut into it, and the sockets were hollow, the silver sockets, and so the way that you grooved it in, and the diagram should show that to you very clearly, is that you placed, there were two, gro two basic, uh, the groove was in the center, and you fit in the two halves that were not, that were not uh, notched, <laughs> into two sockets. So each keresh fit into two sockets and then the socket would be able to hold two crush, two half crushes. And this is the way the sockets braced together the bottom of the bottoms of the crush. Venirin krosim bilulaos kekochavim barakia. Another thing that Chazal tell us is that when you would look up, if you walked into the Mishkan and you looked up and you saw the beautiful uh, fabric as the cover, that was the inner cover, you would also notice the silver hooks that were clasping together the uh, pieces of fabric and the, they would glisten in the light and they would look like stars in the sky. And this is where we'll hold it for today. You have a wonderful day.